Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over the real estate market, see what it's doing. Uh, this is for May 2022 monthly housing market trends report on Realtor.com. What we're gonna go through is the inventory, the price increase and all that stuff. Uh, see if the housing market's actually slowing down. Uh, if we are in a bubble, and a lot of people say we're in a bubble, uh, we would see sky-high inventories, massive inventory. We'd be seeing inventory increase massively. We would see house prices leveling off, which means they would slow down their rate of increase. We would see days on the market be becoming uh, quite a bit higher is what we would see if we were in a bubble. And uh, let's see if the data matches what the narrative that most people have. Uh, the narrative is is the opinions that people have, the sentiment that people have on the housing market. Uh, sentiment can be really bad in a gigantic housing boom uh, because it is getting tougher and tougher to actually acquire real estate. So uh, let's take a look at the data and see what the data is telling us. And obviously, I'll give you my financial opinion here. <clears throat> I'm going to go straight to the graphs because that's really what I care about. <clears throat> so. We've got the active listing count. Uh, this is your active inventory. This is what people can buy. It is up 8% year over year in May 2022. Uh, so it's slightly higher over the last year in the green. The last year, 2021 in green, was an incredibly low level. So we are still incredibly low. Yes, it's gone up. The inventory has gone up, but it is still at incredibly low inventory levels, the overall level. Uh, in order for this to get to a level that is more normalized, we need to get way up here and start stacking way more homes into inventory uh, than what we have today. And we have to blow through all of these line levels, way past it up to like 4 million homes. Uh, we are a long ways away from a balanced market. We're a long ways away in terms of time to get to that balanced market. We need a flood of homes for a very long time to come on to the market, not be sold for this to turn into a bear market. So I don't know where those homes are gonna come from. Uh, I usually say they're gonna come from the new, ho new home builds, which is gonna be very inflationary, but this is an incredibly low level. Uh, and even if we go up in our inventory, even if more inventory comes online at 516,000 homes, uh, that is ridiculously low. So prices will continue to increase with inventories this low. And I'll show you that later. This is pending listing count. I don't really care about that. Newly listed homes. That's kind of like the average, whatever. Uh, moving on down, days in the market's another one I really look at. Days on the market is down six days compared to last year in May. Uh, so we are continuing to move inventory faster. So although we have an inventory increase <clears throat> here, uh, the inventory is still moving very fast. So we're still in a very, we'll call it a seller's market, in a very tight market in terms of inventory, and the days on the market are still incredibly low. We could go all the way up here, and I would still say that this is really good, in terms of inventory days on the market. We could be at 70 or 80 days, and I'd say, ah, that's still pretty good. <laughs> we are down at no man's land at 31 days. This is very, very fast. Uh, and listing prices. What is this? 17.6% year over year? I thought we were in a bubble. How is this going up at 17.6% year over year if we're in a bubble? It's because we're not in a bubble. They are wrong. Uh, this has to slow down, guys. What this does, and, and what I'm talking about, is the gap between these lines. See how the gaps extended between these lines? They've gotten larger and larger, the gaps here. Those need to compress. Those gaps need to compress back down to where you've got basically the years overlaying each other, which means that your price rise is, is very minimal, if any. Then you have to see it gap the other direction. Problem is, all of these metrics are going in the opposite direction for what a, a bubble would, would, would look like. So we're up 17.6%. Uh, my guess 
was between 10 and 20% is what the market would do this year. It looks like we're somewhere in that range. And I'm expecting the market to slow down at some point. Uh, and you know what? It may not slow down for another year or two. I don't necessarily have the answers here. What I'm looking at first is when, when are we going to get the slowdowns? That'll last for probably a couple years. Then we have our, a chance for prices to actually go down if we overbuild or if we get too much inventory. So all of these things are interconnected. Uh, the price is interconnected to days in the market, which is interconnected to your active inventory. And then all of that is connected to how the markets move. How the markets move uh, in terms of the ratios like commodity to stock ratio, uh, how stocks are moving and, and performing, uh, <clears throat> and interest rates. They're all interconnected. That is what I found uh, over uh, all my years. And if we go and we look at the CRB index to S&P 500, this is interlocked with the housing market. The housing market really started to take off and inflation became a problem in 2020, 2021. That's when this ratio started to move up is when interest rates started to move up. Uh, interest rates and oil are also linked together. Oil has a strong correlation to interest rates. Uh, copper to gold ratio has a strong correlation to interest rates. It's all interconnected. The whole kit and caboodle is interconnected here. So uh, the housing market's remaining strong. In my opinion, that is the driver. That is what's driving some of this inflation, not all of the inflation. There's also the stimulus stuff that they threw out there. Uh, that was the shock to the system. Uh, so they threw the stimulus out there. This is the, the, the money that keeps piling into the system through loans against new homes. Uh, then we look at the ratios. The ratios tell us where the value uh, is and isn't. It also tells us how that value is changing against each other. It'll also tell us what the market thinks <clears throat> in terms of this asset versus this asset. It tells us something. It tells us and reflects what the current market conditions are. Um, right now, what it's reflecting is that we have an inflationary environment. That is what this is reflecting. Now, if we were going into a crash, this would turn and come back down. Uh, and we haven't seen that yet. We are still trudging, um, moving higher uh, over time, and it looks really good where the CRB index continues to outperform the S&P 500. I think that will happen for years to come. And, and the reason I look at all this is this here, what I'm looking at here is the real data. You can't take a piece of news and say, this is what the data is, here's the news. Well, the market doesn't believe you. That news doesn't matter. This is what you need to believe. This is the truth. This is what you need to figure out on how to navigate markets. You need to take data, the CRB, and uh, for, well, you can need to take data using ratios to see what the market thinks. And if you look at, if you were just to look at history and you were to look at what, um, assets outperform during inflationary periods, what assets underperform during inflationary periods, uh, what you're going to do is you, and you were to price those in, in terms of ratios against each other. Uh, what you're basically doing with these ratios is it's telling you what the market thinks. That is your real information. It's saying, hey, look, this is what we think. Boom. And throws it right in front of your face. The, S the, the CRB outperforming the S&P 500 means we're in an inflationary environment. If someone says, um, I'm worried about deflation, well, the CRB to S&P 500 isn't, the market's not worried about it, they're worried about inflation. That's why this ratio is going up. If that was another thing, we can use all these different ratios to tell us things, like the platinum to gold ratio. If platinum is outperforming gold, and what does this look like? This period from here, from 2008 to here, we had a declining environment here. This was going downward. That is telling you something about the market the market conditions itself. When platinum um, underperforms gold, you're in a uh, disinflationary or deflationary type environment. Uh, it's disinflationary in this case, which means that the inflation is getting less and less and less. It also is an indicator of your demographics. I can see through this ratio what your demographics of the United States would be and, and the buying that's happening in the real estate market. The real estate market was weaker 
during this time frame. Now it's going to go into a stronger environment. That's what this ratio is telling us. I don't need an article or news to tell me anything. All you need to know is how to know to read these ratios. What does it mean when platinum's outperforming gold? What does it mean when gold's outperforming platinum? What does it mean when gold's outperforming silver? It can tell us what stage we're in the bull market by looking at these ratios as well. And what this is telling me is that we are very early in an inflationary environment and that the bull market in commodities has just begun. It hasn't even really kicked off that much because this would be rocketing if it did. All of these ratios tell us something. The copper to gold ratio tells us something. We've been tracking sideways here. Everybody got all afraid when we started to dip lower. I said, just let it go, guys. You, you don't have to be banshees running around, screaming around, going, oh, it's going to crash, it's going to crash. No, it's not. Just calm down. Calm down and be patient. Wait for these things to play out. This thing has to move all the way back down where it's like, all right, this thing's done. We're coming back up. We've got good um, buying pressure in, in um, copper. The copper to gold ratio, when this is going upward, means that the economy is doing well. That, that Well, historically, we could also signal that there's a problem with copper in relationship to gold, and I think that's going to be the case coming up forward. You're probably going to see this thing start to move on higher uh, soon in the next couple of years. And remember, all this stuff, it, it takes a long time. It's not fast. It's not fast. <clears throat> and this is this your, your crash. When you see crashes, your copper to gold ratio is going to tank. That is when you have problems. This crash right there, that big move lower right there, that is a problem. That is signaling that you have a massive problem in September of 08. It just crash, crash, crash. It bottoms out. That's when you want to get bullish on the economy in a disinflationary environment. Disinflationary means it's going to stay low. And it's going to be stable. All of these ratios mean something. They all mean something. And uranium looks like it's getting a little bit of strength. We got to break out of this and then we are gone on all these. So um, real estate strong. <clears throat> Look at ratios. They tell us something about market conditions. They tell us where we are in the bull market. They tell us what the where the money is, where it isn't, where it's flowing. Uh, it tells us the market conditions of, of what's high, what's low, how it's all moving against each other. And this is what the market thinks. This is the only thing that matters in terms of what people think. I don't care what some individual that has three PhDs thinks about the markets. This is what the real data is. This is what's going to make you successful. This is what you need to learn in order to navigate the markets. You don't need to listen to pundits talk about garbage. You don't need to listen to people's opinions on why they think oil price is going to go lower. You need to look at what the actual participants are voting with their money. That is what you need to look look at. What they're going to talk about and what they're going to jawbone is going to be completely different versus how they're positioning in the markets. We need to know how they're positioning. We need to know what the real data is. We need to figure out how to decipher uh, all this data. And that's exactly what I teach and do on the Finding Value website for the Platinum membership. And our question and answer sessions will get you guys sped up. I'll put information, I'll go into a deeper dive in uh, ratios and post that on the, uh, on, the, on the website and how to read all this stuff. What does it mean? What, what does all these ratios mean? What, you know, what does platinum mean when it outperforms gold? Uh, what it means is we're in an inflationary environment. Stocks t typically tend to underperform during that, that when, when platinum's outperforming gold stocks underperform. It's an inflationary environment. Interest rates are going to increase. We have a housing, usually a housing market boom. It all matters. That is how you become successful and make money in the markets. It's not by listening to other people. It's by knowing what to follow in the markets and where the data is factual and means something. That is how you make money. And if you want to make a bunch of money, subscribe to the Platinum membership on the, the website. Uh, sign up to this channel here. Listen to what I'm what I'm saying here. Get the 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 little you know snippets of information. Uh, learn something every single time. That's how you get better. Invest in yourself. That is where you're going to succeed. All right, guys. Um, I'll leave it there. Uh, thumb up for the content. 
Uh, subscribe to both the channel and the website, and uh, we'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.